How you guys doing? Uh, for this video, I'll be discussing uh, deals and all the reaction. So let's get to it. Um, the deals and all the reaction it consists of two main species that are going to react to form a product, and those two f those two main species are um, a diene and a dienophile. The diene is basically a double bond alternating with a single bond to form to give you back the double bond. So it's a conjugated system where there's two double bonds in conjugation. Conjugation means alteration, alternating between a double bond and a single bond and a double bond, basically. And that's what we have right here. Okay? Now, this is known as your diene. Okay? And this is going to react with a dienophile. And the dienophile basically is simply a alkene a double bond okay and this is your dienophile okay these two react to form a six membered cyclohexene ring okay they form the cyclohexene ring like this okay the mechanism is very straightforward there's no twists and turns to it straightforward and it applies to every different variation of the deals and all their reaction the double bond the pi electrons from here attack this carbon right here to form a single bond okay the pi electrons from here attack this carbon so there's going to be a single bond between this carbon and this carbon these two, this pi electrons over here will attack here to form a new double bond between this carbon and this carbon. So it's all out, all this whole thing happens at one time and the whole reaction is concerted. So that means that it retains, that tells us that it retains stereochemistry. So if you start off with a dienophile that's in the trans, the product has to also remain in trans. Okay, so we'll call back to your first semester of organic chemistry. Um, SN1, it's not like the SN1, I mean SN2 reaction where you have backside, atta backside attack and the product will be an inversion of configuration. No, the, uh, the deals in all the reaction retains the configuration. Okay. Just, that's something to keep in mind. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is electron donating groups and electron withdrawing groups. Okay, so electron donating groups. Okay, okay, electron donating groups, uh, simply abbreviated as EDG. These consist the typical ones you guys will see are alkyl groups so any type of alkyl group like a propyl or a methyl or a um, isopropyl any variation of any alkyl group is a electron donating group and these substituents you'll only find them on the diene these are what make the diene more reactive okay these alkyl groups now that's what you'll find on the diene now <clears throat> there's another uh, group that you usually find on the diene and this is it's kind of confusing and I'll explain it with a little picture um, let me explain it with a picture first so if this is your diene and say you have the substituent the atom directly connected to the carbon of the diene okay to any carbon of the diene if that atom does directly attach to the system, the conjugated system, and that atom has lone pairs, right? That is an electron donating group, and it donates its electrons by resonance. I'm not going to draw a resonance form, but that's how it does. So another form of an electron donating group besides alkyl groups are groups which the atom directly connected to the conjugated system, right, this is your conjugated system right here, 
the atom directly connected has lone pairs on it. If it has lone pairs, that's a key signifier that it is the electron donating group by resonance. So I'll put R right here for resonance. And for alkyl groups, is I for inductive effect. I'm not going to go into all the details of it, but you guys should just know that. And if you have alkyl groups or this type of group where it has lone pairs on the atom directly connected to the conjugated system, it makes the diene more reactive and more stable. Okay? So keep that in mind. And also, just another thing to keep in mind is that resonance has a greater effect is it helps the dying be more reactive than inductive effect so if you have a substituent like this compared to an alkyl group this will be more reactive okay now on the other hand the dienophile you have electron with drawing groups okay and this is on the dieno file okay you have electron withdrawing groups and the main types of electron withdrawing groups you will see include is basically uh, carbonyl groups any type of carbonyl group found on a dienophile right here this is the dienophile right here that makes the dienophile more reactive and more stable so carbonyl uh, groups that include ketones, right, or carboxylic acids, or acid chlorides. I'm just giving you guys a list. Aldehydes. Um, esters, right. These are all examples of carbonyl groups that make um, the dienophile more um, reactive and this are the, these are the types of groups you'll find on the um, dienophile okay and just another little note I want I want you guys to know is that the diene is the nucleophile and the dienophile is the electrophile okay so basically uh, these are all the things you need to know just the mechanism um, what it forms now actually before I go on to examples I just want to show you another variation of the uh, six-membered uh, type of ring that you could form and this only happens when your diene is um, your diene is in a ring it's in a cyclic ring so for example if you have if you have let's put a line right here okay this is the other important thing I need you guys to know and then after that we go into some greater examples so if you have a diene like this and it reacts with a dienophile right it follows the same mechanism as before there's no changes but there's a new okay sorry about that okay but there's just a um, that actually startled me but okay so that uh, so there's just a different variation of it and I'll get into that in the next part of this video so please stay tuned